Okay, so in this video we're going to be doing a brief review and introduction to the Nodis Pro Ignition Only Engine Management System. We'll be covering the features of the unit, what the buttons and LEDs indicate, the connectivity of the unit, and also some review of its basic features. And of course you can see our other videos for guides on how to use the simple easy tune software for configuring the Nodis, as well as our latest Nodis Micro OEM module, which has just become available. There is also more videos on that as well. So first things first, what is the Nodis Pro? Well the Nodis Pro is a standalone 3D mappable ignition ECU. It is designed to run four, six or eight cylinder engines uh, by using wasted spark and modern coil packs and it will read the engine's position from either a 36-1 trigger wheel or a 60-2 trigger wheel meaning it can support Vauxhall, uh, Peugeot and other manufacturers not just Fords without any additional trigger wheels or sensors. It can use these factory original sensors on these engines. The other important thing to note about the Nodis Pro is it has the coil drivers or the ignition drivers built in. So there's no need for any external EDIS modules or ignition amplifier boxes. It's a simple direct connection between this unit, the crank sensor, and this unit and the coil pack for the engine to be up and running. It also features 16x16 16 16 table for ignition, which gives you more resolution and accuracy when mapping an engine. And you can use it with either a throttle position sensor or a manifold absolute pressure sensor for turbocharged engines to get pretty much any engine up and running easily on digital wasted spark electronic ignition. Another great feature is its Bluetooth connectivity, meaning there's no wires to connect for linking to a laptop, as well as the ability to use our Android Digital Dash app, which I've linked to here. Also, things like calibrating the throttle position sensor and also setting the base offset angle, which is important when installing using a trigger wheel, can be carried out without a laptop using simply these two push buttons on the end of the unit. It also features these LEDs, which indicate that the unit is powered and that the coils are firing alternately. It also uses these LEDs to indicate different modes of operation, which can be entered again via these push buttons. The other end of the case features a 20-way Molex connector, very rugged, very high quality and guaranteed to survive the most toughest of environments. Um, the unit itself is serialized and this is the access code for the Bluetooth module for communications, so it's always close to hand, you're not going to stand a chance of losing this uh, code because it is affixed to the back of the unit. Overall, a rugged system. It's not fully watertight, this version. For the watertight system, I would suggest looking at the Nodis Micro, but it is splash-proof. It can quite happily go in an engine bay. Uh, we run, for example, on our race cars under the bonnet, no problem at all. All of the components are automotive grade, which means they're suitable up to 120 degrees centigrade, so there's no problems there either. Okay, so what we'll go through now is a short demonstration of how the push buttons on the unit and the LEDs operate. What we have here is a simple test rig. It allows us to power the unit as well as provide a trigger signal for the crank sensor to simulate as if being fitted to an engine. So we simply plug in the main loom connections. And as you can see, although there are 20 pins on the nodes, this is the bare minimum needed. Approximately seven connections. You have your coil wires, a 12 volt power feed, your throttle position, five volt reference and signal wires, and of course your shielded crank sensor wire. With all of that connected, you can turn on the power supply and immediately you will see the red LED lights. This indicates that the unit is powered and it is microcontroller controlled this LED, it's not just a simple power LED. So it also tells us that everything is up and running and working as it should. This is the first port of call to check when installing your notice that you are indeed getting power and also that the red LED stays lit when cranking. If your key or your cranking system drops the voltage too low, then this LED may may turn off and that's something to watch out for with initially setting up these units. So straight out of the box let's have a look at what we have here. We also have a very uh, scary looking coil pack with a spark gap on there and we can plug this into the unit like this. And if we now turn on the RPM feed you will see, you may not be able to see in the video, but you'll see and certainly hear a spark gap occurring and you'll also see the LEDs on here alternately flash to illustrate that the coils are indeed firing. 
So I can vary the RPM using my function generator. That's a very low speed. Up to and beyond the rev limiter, at which point the ignition will stop. And then come back down again. This of course is demonstrated with the base map that comes preloaded on the Nodis. If you simply wire this into a Ford ZTEC engine, it will start and it will run and the car will drive absolutely fine. The tuning is adequate enough to be able to do so and most users are impressed with how quickly and simply it is to install. Of course there's plenty of videos on YouTube of users doing first time startups on ST170s and an array of different engines so be sure to check those out. Okay, the next part of installing the unit to get a bit more advanced features out of it is to set up the throttle position sensor. Now, I have here a simple variable resistor, which will act as our throttle position sensor, which is wired into the node is here. And all you need to do to set up the TPS sensor is hold down the inside button, the button closest to the LEDs, and then switch on the ignition power. You'll see the red LED comes on, then release the button, and you'll see the LEDs blink. And they're now blinking, I'll show it to the camera so it's easy to see. They're blinking at a rate that shows the TPS reading. So if you open your throttle, or in this case close the throttle, you'll see they blink at a slower rate. And if you then increase your throttle opening, you'll see they blink at a faster rate. Whenever it does this, it's actually also saving the upper and lower settings for the throttle position sensor. So by simply entering this mode and opening and closing the throttle from fully open to fully closed a few times, it will set the throttle position sensor up for you. You don't need to use a laptop or any software to do this, just simply plug it in and use the push buttons. Also, the flash rate shows that the sensor is wired around the correct way. Of course, if they flash at a different rate, for example, flash faster when the throttle is closed and more slowly when the throttle is open, then you have your 5 volt reference and your ground wire wired incorrectly. If the LEDs don't seem to vary in speed very much at all from open to close, they just seem to stay fairly fixed, then you probably have your signal and either the ground or the V reference wire round the wrong way. But be sure to read the user manual as there's a very simple guide on how to set up your throttle position sensor and ensure the wiring is correct. The next part of setup is setting the base offset timing. Now the base map is set for 90 degrees which is what all Ford four cylinder engines would use. So as I said for a ZTEC engine it will literally plug on and run. However you do have the ability to trim the base offset advance so that when the map says 37 degrees for example the engine is actually running at 37 degrees. This is most important when fitting an aftermarket trigger wheel uh, because the alignment of the sensor to the crankshaft rotation is all very important. The maximum trim angle is approximately 40 degrees either side of 90 degrees, so try and get it as close as possible, but you do have approximately four teeth either side error to allow for the most extreme uh, angles and also to make things easier for sensor positioning and so on. In order to enter this mode, simply hold down the outside button with the ignition off, turn the ignition on, and then release the button, and you'll see the green LED flashes briefly. Now when we're firing an RPM signal, or when we crank the engine over, what you'll have is the notice module will tell the engine to fire at what it believes to be exactly zero degrees. So my advice is disconnect the carburetors from the engine, disconnect the fueling system, because uh, the fueling, so we can purely focus on the ignition. And using a timing light and a known TDC mark on the engine, simply crank the engine over and you'll see it spark. If you have the flash happening on TDC, it's already accurately set up, you can leave it at that. However, if the timing mark is off by a few degrees, you can use the outside and the inside button, just simply hold them down, and that will increase or decrease the offset angle, and you'll actually see the spark gap, you'll actually see the, sorry, the timing mark move on the trigger wheel. When it's lined up to TDC, simply stop pressing buttons, turn the ignition off, and that's it done. You've now set the base zero offset angle, which as I've said means that when the dial gauge on the EasyTune software says 20 degrees of advance, the engine is in fact running at 20 degrees of advance. Very straightforward. You don't need a laptop to do it. And again, it will help you get up and running very, very quickly. And it also allows for any misalignment of the trigger wheel. Unlike EDIS based systems, if the trigger wheel is not completely set at 90 degrees, you have a bit of a headache to get it to run properly, you have to guess that the offset is incorrect and so on. This guarantees you get a perfectly set up system regardless of the alignment of your trigger wheel in the first place. 
Okay, so let's just quickly recap the main features of the Nodis Pro. It is a fully standalone, 16 by 16, fully interpolated 3D mappable ignition system for four, six, or eight cylinders. It can support either 36 minus one or 60 minus two trigger wheels without any modification needed and no external decoders or amplifier modules. It has the inbuilt coil drivers, so there's no need for EDIS modules, ESC boxes, or active coil packs. It will work with standard DUM, Ford, or Bosch coil packs. It has coolant and air temperature ignition adjustment maps, which can be used, for example, on a engine that is hard to start from cold. You can reduce the ignition advance in these cases. It has a programmable shift light output as well as a, a spare programmable output which you can map to RPM, throttle position, manifold pressure, coolant or air temperature. It has a 12 volt tachometer output so you can drive your standard dashboard tachometer as well as drive aftermarket digital tachometers. It has inbuilt launch control of which a great video is here of the launch control in action. It features Bluetooth communications and again, here is a short video of the Android digital dashboard app that you can use to connect to the Nodis device with your phone and see exactly what's going on in the engine as well as use it as a lightweight dashboard application in kit cars and hill climbing cars and sprint cars. It's incredibly small, easy to set up and has a great feature base and a great entry into aftermarket engine management for carburetor based engines. It can be used to replace older distributor drive engines, for example old Triumph engines, to modernise them, or it can be used on engines that don't feature a distributor drive like a Vauxhall engine or a Ford ZTEC or Drawatec engine, in which case you can use the standard trigger wheels to get the engine up and running. For more information visit nodis.co.uk and be sure to check out our other videos for guides on tuning, the easy tune reviews and also the OEM Micro. Thanks.